We have come to Downey today. The house is overgrown at 9828 Neville Drive in Downey. But I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Because this is the car Carpenter's home. Where Karen Carpenter lived. And eventually passed away came back home here in that window up there in the right this is where the carpenters lived this is the house they bought their parents it's real, real near the intersection of the 5 and the 605 freeways this house is in an album cover of theirs from the 70s and I just always wanted to come here because I grew up listening to the Carpenters. They actually had this property next door to the left here where the skeletons are now. <laughs> they actually had these two lots and over here on this lot was their studio and their offices where they actually sang, where they actually wrote all the music. But yeah, we drove a while to get here today just to take this off my bucket list. And the neighbors leaving their home. Yeah. I'll stop filming for a second. Oh, I There's no I sidewalks. See. They have a deer. Oh dear. And way down in there, there's a kitty. Hi, baby. Hi, kitty. But that tree has grown really big. So Richard Carpenter sold this house in 1997, but I think Karen died in 1980 or 87, no 87. Mm. We could look it up, but you all can comment and tell me what I'm saying wrong would be helpful. But You want to read it? Sure. Okay. When the Parra family bought their home at 9828 Newville Street in Downey, they had no idea they were buying a tourist attraction. Since the mid-70s, fans of the AM Gold Hitlings, the Carpenters, have flocked to the suburban streets to have a glimpse of the five-bedroom house and adjoining studio and office where their beloved musical siblings, Richard and Karen, lived and worked. But the family has grown weary of the requests to be let inside and seeing looky loos pointing to the upstairs bedroom where the anorexic Karen collapsed in 1983 prior 83. to her death. You were right. At first, the Paras invited fans inside and gave away autographed posters and other items that Richard Carpenter had left behind when the property was sold. Sites online <clears throat> show photos of the home's inside and testimonials from fans' visits and rumblings that the Japanese garden had become too dilapidated for their liking. The Paras have already torn down the adjacent building that served as offices and re a recording studio and have submitted plans to the city for demolition of the house and a larger home they hope to erect in its place. There it is, the larger home next door. <laughs> fans, however, are outraged. The house, which is included in the cover art of the band's 1974 album Now and Then, is symbolic to them. The man leading the crusade to save the home, John Conjoyan, calls it our version of Graceland and hopes he and others can band together to get the home privately purchased and rehabilitated at its current location or moved elsewhere. Some suggest Downey officials declare the house a historic landmark as a way of encouraging its preservation and supporters believe doing so would call attention to the issue of anorexia in addition to keeping their icon's home a memorial. Richard Carpenter, who sold the home in 1997, long after his parents and sister had died, has stayed out of the debate. All right. So we were on our way to Disneyland today and this was just a jog about a 16 mile jog out of the way for us to get to Disneyland but there it is 
obviously different roll up garage doors on the house, newer garage doors, but up there to the front door. And we'll probably get out of here before we wear out our welcome. And they tore down what they said the studio and the offices that were here. And these people built this thing. It looks like they left up Halloween. And the kitty's just sitting there watching us. This is something on its own here. And the street's just a cul-de-sac. It ends right here. Plane going into LAX. It's a nice quiet little street. Oh. Has I made the dog bark? That was really funny actually. Alright, we're gonna head down to Disneyland.